Welcome to episode 180 of Explode Your Expert Business Show, brought to you by gtex.org.uk. I'm your host, Simone Vincenzi, the expert strategist, and this is the podcast for experts who want to become the ultimate authority in their niche while making an impact in the world. And uh, today I've got something special because we're going to talk about selling from the stage using the giving method with John Hubbard. But before I'll tell you a bit more about that, then uh, I want to remind you that we are running an incredible free training on Tuesday, day 6th of November, and you can register using the link in the show notes. Their training is called From Expert Authority to Authority and how to monetize your message, get booed consistently around the world and create six figure events. So I'm going to share with you basically everything I've learned uh, by running more than 1000 events uh, all over the UK and uh, in the world. So click here to register if you want to be able to speak all over the world, uh, create six figure events and monetize your message. Now, going back to John Abbott, uh, John is a thought leader, mentor, writer, entrepreneur, world traveler and adventurer. And John wants to show others how through the act of giving, then we can positively impact the world. John is on a mission to awaken people to their power and to create a positive change on our planet. And he discusses in this interview the giving model and he shares how this uh, technique is not only good for business but a great way to reach out and help others to uh, now this interview has been recorded at uh, the festival which is called freedom x uh, which is um, a festival on location independence living uh, that uh, we're he run in spain uh, with uh, his partner estella and uh, I was there speaking and uh, uh, reviewing and writing articles about this uh, incredible community of uh, uh, location independent uh, um, business uh, people, but also people were from every walk of life. And it was an incredible experience. In fact, the link is uh, in the show notes to check out the next Freedom X Festival. And in this episode uh, with John, we talk about uh, why many speakers struggle to sell, how to use the giving model to fill up coaching and consulting programs, and also how to sell from the stage just given. Uh, you can read the transcript and bonus resources at www.gtex.org.uk forward slash 180. And also that you can connect with John Abbott here below and on the website. Uh, now remember again uh, to register for our training from expert to authority how to monetize your message, get book consistently around the world and create six figure events. It's the first time I'm doing this training. I don't know if it's gonna be repeated again. So make sure you register if you're serious about growing your expert business and be seen as an authority in your field. If you haven't subscribed to the show yet, subscribe right now. And without further ado, let's hear it from John Habit, the selling from the stage given method. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to another episode of Explode, your expert biz show. I'm here today with the one and only John Hubbard, live from the Freedom X Festival. How are you doing, John? I'm awesome. It's really great to be chatting to you. Uh, I'm really excited about this interview because uh, I'm all about selling from the stage. You're all about not selling from the stage. So before we go into diving into this topic, uh, uh, why don't you sp tell us a bit about you and how did you end up uh, doing non-selling from the stage, uh, which uh, is a really interesting concept. Yeah, great. Um, so for for many years, since 2006, I uh, I became a uh, an events coordinator and ran events in Australia for a guy named uh, Roger Hamilton. And uh, we were running events up to like 2,000 people across the country. And he would show up and, you know, he would, he would present from stage. And he was really, really good. In fact, he's extraordinary. You know, he's a really great person who actually doesn't sell from stage. He sells off the stage. So he invites people um, to, you know, congregate. And then he has a conversation with them. And he does a really good job. But even then, when, you can, you know, when you're doing a really great job at, at inviting people in, when you're in an environment of an, of, of an event, you just can't connect with all of them. So what I saw was a lot of people joining programs and buying things because of the frenzy and excitement. And 
a lot of them really misled in the way of they, they don't know what they don't, don't know about where they should, you know the next good good step for them to take so they just buy stuff and then they go to the programs and they really aren't suited for them and i saw a lot of that happening and you know that part was one one of them that that i i uh, that challenged me and then the other part that challenged me was that we'd run events and then we'd get to the end of the event and the sales weren't great and we're uh, looking at that going geez we didn't do well at this event at all and we had no follow-up strategy no way of actually then you know saving the event or saving you know it financially so um and the events industry kind of was getting to me like you know i did it for like five or six years and you know it takes a lot of energy as you know to fill an event put people on 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 seats you know the registrations all of the information all of the uh the the you know the question and feedback forms and all of the uh you know the sales that you try and do in the room and managing the crew and it's huge you know we take three months every every time to run an event to like set it all up and it was full time work flat out um and and i just i was thinking to myself what could we do differently how can we do this in, a, in a, another way that really serves the people that we're talking to so uh so that's that's where i, I kind of got to and uh, i left I, I left australia i went in, to live in bali eight years ago and I'd, and in that move, I decided I'm not going to I'm, I'm not going to do this anymore. I don't want to do events anymore. I've got to find a different way. And those were the big things, the big questions that, that I had. And I I came up with a model which was all about well, what if we didn't sell sell to people? What if we just gave the programs away? Okay, there was a long pause there because I was like, okay, so I see what you mean about the industry. And uh, I see what you mean about the fact uh, that uh, you're selling from the stage, you're selling off the stage. For me, still selling from the stage uh, is just a different type of clothes uh, that you're using. Uh, but so you're saying, what if I don't sell from the stage, then uh, you give it away for free. So how do you monetize it? That's the question. Yep. And Yeah, so... so the what 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 I found was when when you got to the end of an event and people came to the event, if you pitched to them or you didn't pitch to them, whatever what, whichever way you decided to do it, because so, some people don't like to pitch, um, we were always looking for what, what what could we do to to make turn the event in, into a success after the event. Um, so what we did we we did was develop a process of follow up. And we can run them in. We now can run. We now run them in events as well as as follow up. But we generally run it as follow up. So a lot of my clients do pitch from stage. They they pitch like their entry level program, fifteen hundred dollar type program, retreat, or whatever else. Um, and we go after all the people that don't buy. So that's where it really does sit really well. But a, a lot of our clients don't even want to pitch from stage. So we actually use the entire strategy without them pitching from stage. So we use it on all the people who come to the event. And it's a really simple process. It's an it's essentially getting people to put applications in, and we get pretty close to about a hundred percent of the people put applications in, who come into this environment. Is as long as we keep we catch them live and we catch them early. If we catch them later, we get about twenty to thirty, forty percent sometimes, depending on the experience of that speaker and the rapport that he has and all that type of thing. But essentially, what we do is we give the, his program away. So let's say you're a speaker. And you're selling a three-day retreat, fifteen hundred dollars, or a five-day retreat, you know, five grand or seven grand, whatever it is. What we do is rather than go, hey, this is the program, and you know, it's seven thousand dollars, and today you got it, it's five thousand dollars, like that, the whole pitch thing, and you don't know who's coming in, because like you know, if you get one hundred and fifty people run to the back of the room, there's no chance. You're just going to get these people to sign up, and you don't know who's going to show up. So rather than doing that, what if we got into a conversation and let's give it away at least one of these programs? to encourage people to put applications in. So that's how that's the strategy, that's the thought behind it. And it works. Um, but it doesn't mean we give it away to everyone. So so we, we utilize the idea of number one, can we make a huge huge difference in people's lives who actually wouldn't have been able to make it by being able to get applications in, look at those applications and find the people that we'd love to help. Um, and it could be people doing great charity work and they just need help with their business to take it to the next level and they've got an extraordinary charity, whatever it is. And we can work with that. Like now we can actually be purposeful in the way that we you know, promote our programs and support people on the long of the way because we're making profit anyway. 
And what it doesn't make any difference if we have one or two other people that we can support if we've got 500 other people in our programs or whatever it might be. So, so this, the thought behind it is purpose first. How can we be purposeful first, give to people that are really um, deserving in the work that they're doing, and we can actually support them with our programs. And by doing that, we get huge applications from everybody else. Because again, if you're in, in your, your event and you've, you've done a great presentation and everybody in the, in the audience is your target audience, you go, hey guys, I'm doing this program, who would like it for free? You get all the hands, every time, every hand goes up. So, so that's the process. We get all the hands. We get applications coming in from everybody in the event. And now we can read about where they're at, what value they see in the program, because we ask them, by doing this program, what, what impact is this going to have in your life and on the future of yourself and your business, et cetera? So I love this model. I absolutely love this model. I see it working. It's fantastic. I'm a big fan myself of the application clause, and uh, I agree with you that uh, by now, by here, lives a, a high percentage of the room not buying, and uh, an application, cl- and also it's very difficult to do. Uh, people, when you need to get someone for meeting you the first time to give you their money and a credit card, is a, a very difficult skill to learn, to master, to have a high number of people buying from the back of it. Yeah. So then, and also some people say, no, I don't want to do it. So that's why I'm a big, big fan of the application clause and it works incredibly well. What I love about that as well is taking it to a next level and saying, this is not only an application, but some people will get it for free if they can't pay. So now I have a few questions I want to go deeper into. How does it work? How do you select the right people? Because uh, even with an application close, you can get the wrong people in. Is is a, is more likely you can select the right ones based on the information they give you on the application. But so how do you make sure... Okay, there are a few things I want to explore. The first one is how do you make sure you get... Uh, the right people in from the application. So what are the points that you're looking for? And how do you distinct divide the people that uh, you will pitch the paid one to the people that you will say, here's a free one? That's a great question. That's a, that, it comes down to, I guess, the whatever your criteria is to select anybody in your business. I, I, I almost go to like who would you put who would you give your money to and how would you select them and what criteria would you use to give your money to let's see if you're an investor like that's kind of where I start the conversation and I take a whole bunch of things away from that so I I sit with my clients and I go through because like they 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 do all sorts of things from healers to um to to business coaching to you know female entrepreneurship to whatever it might be. So like they're doing all sorts of different kinds of retreats and programs and coaching and all that. So everybody is different. Everybody has the different criteria for their perfect target audience. And and essentially a big part of that is we want to make sure that, you know, we are serving people who are, are in the right mindset to to come along. So there's there's two parts of the process. Number one, application in, read the applications, select the first person, Number three is have three people have a conversation with those three people that you get down to the like the short short your short list, and then after the through the conversation, you find them because you can have a conversation with them. You can see with they if they're the kind of human being you want. Are they open enough to be able to um, you know to be work you know do we worked with? Are they coachable? All those types of things that people are looking for. Yes, the criteria is really important. And then once you you've chosen that. Then you've got all of the other people who you can shortlist, um, and usually about, to be honest, about 95% of the applications that come in are pretty close. You know, like people who are putting them in, again, about you know, your me- it's about your message, your target audience, um, and then the way that you ask the questions, you're going to get the right people. Um, so, so those those three processes and getting on phones is the last part of it. So we have then a panel of essentially salespeople, um, sales agents. These guys are coaches as well, and they have the criteria that they need, that they're looking for, and we they they then go through the short list of the rest of the people, and the second part of this is where you make profit is then we run different funding mechanisms for your second prize 
people. So the people who are awarded potentially a scholarship um, as part of the application process. So the first person, let's say, wins the whole thing all free. And then we may have, let's say it's a $7,000 retreat. We may have a 1000 or $1,500 or even up to $2,000 that we may put towards the next person's application because of the criteria, because of the situation they're in. And those people then making those judgments on those calls and they're given that authority to do that. It's really fascinating. So then the question becomes, uh, if I am in the audience and I'm interested in this application, I'm playing a bit the devil advocates because I want to look at how do you deal with these different situations because I'm, I'm sure that it will come up. I'm putting the application in and uh, I say, well, I put the application because I wanted it for free, even if they have the money to pay for it. How then do you deal with this situation and how then do you get people then to pay the full price? Because, yeah, we can. you can always look at the margin and always say, okay, the, the amount of money I really want is 5,000, so I'll sell it for 7,000, so then I can get the minimum amount that um, I need to make the profit margins that I want and as well to create a great experience for them and uh, n not go on a loss. Because that's the thing, when you're selling retreats or events, you have a lot of costs as an organizer. And we're organizing an, a retreat in Thailand in January, uh, about 21 people, is a lot of money that we are putting out. Uh, and the flights and the organization and the staff and organizing the activities is about a four to five months long process to organize it. So. I want to make sure that I get paid well for it. So how then, uh, using this method, uh, do you have people paying the full price? What's the, the process in that? Yeah, I guess I guess it's like anything. You know, Th Does anyone pay full price at an event? Generally not. Because in general, people will take an event price, uh, go on my website, it's X, Y, Z, but because you had the event today, I'm going to give you a special, a special price. So there's no different in, in that way. You know, the thinking is no different, but you're able to sell more because you get people on phones and you're talking to them. And we we sell somewhere between 40 to 110% of what our speakers can sell on the event. We sell again on top of that. So if you consider that you could up, you know, potentially even double the sales that you could do from stage, then you know, you've know you got a little bit more to, to work with, especially when once you hit break even. You know? Uh, a lot of the speakers that we actually work with already do pitch. You know, so they do their pitch from stage. They get five, ten, you know, maybe twenty percent conversion rate for the you know, the good guys, and then you've got eighty percent to go talk to. And if we can match them, you know, somewhere between forty to a hundred percent of what they did, that is, that's absolute pure profit for them because they're already profitable pitching from stage, and they have no follow up mechanism. So, the 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 the, the system can work. If you're a pitcher and you're a good pitcher and you enjoy pitching, it works really great with people who are really bad at pitching. A lot of our, uh, the clients that we work with are fabulous at delivering the content from stage, totally inspiring. But when they shift into the sale, everybody feels it because the energy changes and they get – and these guys are professional. They've been doing for tens, you know, tens of years and they still stumble over it and they do like a 4, 5, 6, 7% conversion rate consistently all the, all the time. And they don't enjoy the pitch, but they do it because that's the only thing they know. So those guys, we get over 100% conversion rate of the rest of the people because they've done such a great job. Yeah, I can. Uh, I've seen it multiple times. Applications work incredibly well, in particular because they they take off the pressure from the speaker of okay, I need to sell, I need to remember it. And as you said, some of them they don't enjoy the selling. They they get it. The the sales as a speaker works uh, if you enjoy selling because then if you love selling naturally then you can play with that and the audience see that you are playful that you're having a good time when you're selling and the response to the sales in that way that's why i love selling and i'm playing with the audience i'm i'm doing cartwheels on stage sometime i'm doing push-ups and i have basketballs that i'm using during my pitch because it's a my is it's creativity for me it's an expression for me yeah. Then you go to someone's a speaker that doesn't love it, and then they, they turn into this. Um, um, yeah. By the way, mm, I might have something that uh, maybe you sh could join uh, if you think that you maybe got a bit of value from this. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and it's like, oh my god, what's that? <laughs> so I, I completely got it. 
Now I will. I want to ask you because I'm using a lot of uh, a lot of times the application clause myself, depending from the scenarios. And there is always uh, a um, a percentage of the people that uh, will book the the conversation, the application, but then uh, they will not book the phone call. They will not shop on the phone call. And so it's a matter of okay, what kind of sequences or what kind of follow up? Because I I agree with you, the money is in the follow up. Yeah. If you close 20, 30 percent from the stage, you're like if you're the top the top end. 20, 30% of a cold audience, then you still have 70% of people that are potential buyers. So the money is always in the follow-up. So how do you make sure you maximize using this process the amount of people from the moment they fill up the application, make sure that they turn up on that phone call? That's perfect. So so we run it, you know, let, let's use use one of the versions of rolling it out. And yeah, one of my, ty- my clients, Tyler Tolman, loves the competition um, version of this. So he actually runs it like a competition. So he goes, put your application in, someone's gonna win this, yeah, it's gonna be really cool. You know, tell us why why, you know, by coming to this program, your whole you know, your health is going to change and how you know how that's gonna shift and change your experience of life. Like right? he's on stage and he's in, he's speaking like this. And for those of you know, so we're gonna we're gonna get one person who's gonna come along to my program, blah blah blah. And then for everybody else who comes through if you put an inspiring application, you may get shortlisted and you may be able to actually tap into one of our second and third prizes and you know, he kind of details what that might be. So it, it's, it's kind of gamific- gamifying the whole application process rather than it just being, hey, put an application and we'll do a consult. But everyone knows this. Like a oh, consult, yeah, it's a sales call and, and we see it coming. But when you gamify it and you make it a bit more fun and you're going to give one away, People get excited. Let me tell you, the conversations that our, our team have, it's like, hey, congratulations, you've been shortlisted uh, for one of one of the second or maybe third prizes with Tyler Tom. And people are, really? It's really? I've never won anything. It's like people get so excited. And you know, people love winning things and they love good deals. So like if if you can if you can pull them together, make it a bit more fun, get into a conversation, make sure you're also guiding them best. So we don't actually sell on, the only program that we give away. The job of the, of, of the person on the call is to actually guide the people even better so that we get the right people in the right seats and the right programs. So now what you, like you've got so many advantages of getting on the phone, as you know. Um, so number one, you put people in the right place. People are super happy. They feel held. They feel heard. They, they feel that they can trust you now because you've taken the time out. You can't do that from stage. You can only do it in a one-on-one conversation. Um, so, so they're more likely to buy. Number two, they're going to get a great deal. So they're more likely to buy. Number three, they're a bit excited because like the, the process has gone through. They put an inspiring application in. They, they don't get shortlisted if they didn't. And, and we speak to that. You know, we read the application and we use that in the conversation. Like any good coach in the application, they're going to tell us what, what, what's going on for them. If it's a health issue, they're telling you what the health issue And they're telling you why they want to move through this and how they can be better with their with their family because right now they are just sick or whatever it might be. So you can you can speak to this application far more powerfully. Um, and then the fourth the, the 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 last one is unanswered questions. In the in when people are sitting in the audience and you pitch them, they have questions, but because there's like frenzy and they can't speak to someone and they feel shy, or some people just never make decisions right there, and then they go home and they have unanswered questions. So you get to answer those questions in the call that. Again, if you hadn't had a follow-up process, they wouldn't. Yeah, you, know, you wouldn't be able to have those conversations. So, like, it, it is so multifaceted for me. I, I feel like it's it's a way of you can still pitch if you like, but actually you can take the whole pitch out. Um, a great client of mine, Joanne Fedler, she uh, she she came to me and she's uh, she ran a seven-day um, uh, author uh, author challenge. She's a book writer and and, and a coach in, in in authoring. And she came to me just before she launches and said, John, I don't know how to write the sales page after this, this seven-day challenge to sell my, you know, my you know, six-week um, author awakening adventure. Um, and she, said, she was like stressed and you could see she was upset, you know, she was like upset about what she was doing. I said to her, well, what if you didn't sell it and you just gave it away? And you should have seen her face change. It was like, <laughs> like the head's twitching and everything else. And then I explained to her process, what if rather than trying to sell those people into the program and give them this offer and it's like buy now and it's time sensitive and all that stuff, what if you just said, hey, because you've just finished this adventure, you've done a freaking awesome job, you guys showed up, you played full out, I want to give 
at least one of my programs away. She gave seven away, by the way. She gave five away to to uh, people in Africa who would never have been able to done the, her, her, her program. And she gave two away to um, you know, people in Australia as well. But she was able to give that, and she you know, she got 100% of the people in the audience put the application in, 100%. We had on average about 380 people showing up across the seven days. We had 380 applications. So it, it changes everything, changes the energy, and it helps people get into – you know, place where they feel you know, they don't they don't feel like they're trying to pressure people into anything, and of course you're a great salesperson, so you know how you know how to obviously you know turn that into more fun and and pleasure as well. But a lot of people don't. I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm actually going to test it. I'm going to test the the whole gamification thing in my next appli- next time I use the application because I never use that. Uh, we get a lot of applications in. Uh, I I percentage eighty ninety hundred percent of the room, but uh, with uh, the gamification, I can see many more people then coming on the call and making this whole process as exciting as it would be when I'm on stage and I'm selling it because uh, I I can see the dynamics. Oh, I like that! Such a great interview, yeah. guys. This is uh, if you're right now you're listening and you're saying, "Well, I'm not good at selling from the stage." It's not that you're not good at selling from the stage. It's that you have not yet found your way of selling from the stage. And the, my main message here is that there are many ways. You have the application way. You have the relationship close. You have the uh, the, the getting now close. Uh, you can play and gamify now even your application, making sure that the process is more exciting, like John is saying. So you have uh, all these different ways, uh, and uh, it's up to you now to test it and uh, to see which one then uh, is the best for you and for what what your natural selling style is. Because that's what I believe. Everyone is a natural selling style. Because sales is communication, is persuasion. When I want something, some if you want something you, and you really want it, you will have a way to talk to your friends and family about why you should have that thing. And uh, you convince yourself of having that thing in the first place. So you're selling first to yourself. So you are a natural salesperson. You were born a salesperson. Uh, and one question, one more question that I have is, uh, uh, and then we're going to move in the last part of this uh, of this interview, is that do people know when they are on the stage how much is the price of the different tires and prices or is the price being left out completely from uh, the whole equation of the pitch? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we, we usually will use a slide that has the first price, second price on the slide. So it's like, you know, $5,000, somebody's going to win that whole $5,000. Second prize, it's $5,000 and a $1,000 scholarship towards or whatever else um, some of our clients don't do don't talk about the second prize at all they just say we've got second prizes and other scholarship uh, funding ability that we do and then and then it's in the conversation with the person so then then they can actually adjust the price based on who they're talking to um, and you know they've got criteria of course because they, you know you've got to know what your your bottom line is that you can go down to and they've got criteria on who they can give that to but yeah in general you want to show enough for people to kind of go, okay, I understand what that is. Um, and then in the follow-up communication, you want to get really clear. So once they put the application in, then it is, these are the prizes that are available. And then I put it up on a website and you know they can have a look at that. But in general, most people are going to put an application in to win, as they do. Yeah. Okay, that's perfect. So the, the, the recommendation is that show the, the real price because then uh, – people can associate it to the value and then uh, when they are on the call whether you give them the price uh, the, the, the full scholarship or whether you give them one of the other prizes then uh, they have already a measure of contrast uh, and they can see where the deal is and why there is this price um, I think that will be a very important part of the puzzle uh, I have one more question before uh, we wrap up, John. Is um, I like to do a part on a podcast called uh, "Lifting the Veil," and "Lifting the Veil" is uh, where I'm going to ask you one tool or one uh, thing that you're using in your business or in your life that uh, everyone must have or everyone should have, and is not connect doesn't have to be connected to what we talked about so far. Can be a book that you read. A meditation that you use can be an app that you have 
something, a gadget that you have in your house, whatever. What is the thing for you? Well, beside my downhill mountain bike, <laughs> Um, there's a there's an extraordinary process that I learned from uh, one of my clients, Tyler Tolman, um, and it's a kriya. Um, it's a it's a mantra, and it's a way to start the day. It's called the Subha Kriya, and and, and maybe we can follow you know, follow up in the email or, or write it down because to spell it actually is quite quite weird, but it's actually a kriya that that is beautiful in centering you, and and opening up yourself to attracting great wealth in your life. Can you explain what is a kriya for? people that are listening right now they don't know what is a kriya okay it, it's kind of like a meditation but it's it's more of a a, a body movement uh, there's chanting um and uh and there's meditation all all happening at the same time <laughs> that's the best way i can explain it and uh, how does uh, this kriya work can you give an example on how does that work and now we can put some links uh, as well in uh, the relevant links uh, here in the show notes so, so it's all about energy work. So this is this is about again, it's about your energy, um, what you attract in your life, uh, the vibration that you you you, you start your day with, um, and the and the the things that you focus on in your life, and the things that you start to focus on in the morning. Um, so that that's the basis of it, um, and it's using technology that is ancient technology. It's using sound. It's using words that are, um, yeah, what what would we call it? It's it's connected with the ancient gods. It's connected with um, with spirit. It's connected with energy. So it opens up things. It opens up chakras. It, it gets you aligned. It gets you connected in, and it helps you just have a far more um, far more beautiful experience of life each day if you start if you start with something like this. Um, it's, and, I, and, I, and what I'll do is actually say, take a challenge and try and do ninety days of it. So we're going to put some link uh, here in the show notes so then you can test it out uh, for all of you spiritual freaks that are listening right now. I'm sure you will love it. They're like, yeah, I want to test this out now. <laughs> if you are alive, you're listening, you're like, what is that stuff? Uh, give it a go anyway. you got nothing to lose. <laughs> and uh, if you are saying, no, I'm not interested in this, just forget it. We are never, we are never talked about that. <laughs> just whatever resonates with you guys. So thank you very much, John, uh, for being here. Uh, what do people want to reach out to you, want to work with you? Uh, do you have a giveaway or something for people to connect with you? Over to you. Sure. Well, I'm very happy to to pass on the blueprint of the giving model to anybody who wants to reach out to me. Um, come come pop onto my website, johnabbott.me, um, and just send me a message and I'll send you the blueprint. Brilliant. So johnabbott.me. And you will see the link in the show notes, or if you're uh, listening on this episode on our website, you can scroll down and there is going to be the link as well in the blog post that we are writing about uh, this episode. Now, uh, it's time for me and John to go and enjoy the sun because it's been raining like crazy here in, uh, in Spain where we are. And uh, this morning, uh, in fact, we are we are here tucked in in, in my tent recording uh, <laughs> this uh, this episode. Uh, and uh, like, guys, we I have a big tent. So <laughs> before you imagine like the small tent, and now we are like scooping, uh, <laughs> spooning uh, <laughs> to record this part. No, that's not the image that I want you to have. <laughs> it's, it's a large tent. We are we are sitting on the bed because uh, I, I'm uh, I'm posh and I, I don't. I don't camp anymore uh, from the moment I got married. Um, my wife uh, gave me a, an upgrade. And before I used to camp, uh, and now I'm like, I don't camp, I glamp now. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to enjoy the rest of the festival. Make sure you connect with John. And uh, remember that uh, is uh, about you co- and selling from the stage and finding uh, your natural selling style. And definitely the giving method is uh, one of the best methods that there are out there of selling from the stage and uh, guys if i say it it works because i've experienced anything and everything from selling from the stage i'm a selling from the stage freak and it's, it's my thing is the thing i do is thing i love so this method i can see ticks all the boxes and definitely works so make sure you connect with john john again thank you very much for being on this episode yeah thank you so much And guys, thank you for listening. If you haven't subscribed yet to Explode Your Expert Biz Show, subscribe right now in this very moment. Click that sexy, juicy button, subscribe that you see, and um, leave us a five-star review. Of course, five-star. I I know you would love to give six stars, but five stars are enough. Um, 
there is not a six star, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would have given uh, John a, a six star for this interview. And let us know what did you enjoy the most about this interview? What was your biggest learning? And uh, up until next episode, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you next. And always remember that together we grow exponentially. Bye for now.